my name is uh, Raymond Berg. I'm from uh, Thief River Falls. Uh, originally from the Viking area, but uh, now I'm in Thief River Falls. And uh, I went to school in Thief River, eight years of country school, Lincoln High School in Thief River. Uh, in uh, 54, there was Nothing to do after the summer of work, so I joined the Navy. Joined the Navy, and uh, where'd you take, how'd you get the basic? Uh, I took, a, they gave me, a, got on the train in Fargo, and they gave me a sleeper to Great Lakes, Illinois. North of Chicago. North of Chicago. Yeah. And, uh, How'd that go getting there? Good, as far as I remember, yes. Good. Okay, so you get to uh, basic, and what happens? Well, I just went through basic, and uh, everything went well. I had been in the National Guard in, uh, when I was senior in high school, so I did have at least the basic military training, and. You were in the National Guard yes. in high school? Yes. So I've never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, how do you get into the National Guard in high school? Well, I think... Like your senior I, year or something? Or? Yeah, to my senior year, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I think the unit had uh, been to training, called up to service for Korea, and uh, went to training, and before they <clears throat> went over, they must have uh, signed the, whatever they signed and ended the Korean War. So the guard unit came home and, and uh, in the fall of 53 they were pretty well, pretty well uh, gone. There wasn't much left of it and somehow the high school seniors started joining. <coughs> and I think before before the winter, I think uh, it seemed like pretty near half of the high school class of 54 had joined the National Guard. Really? Yes. I never heard anything like that. Yeah. We were all in so the, the National Guard unit went to Korea. Well, they didn't go, I don't think. They, uh, they were at training, they had been through training, and before they did get sent over, the, uh, they ended the Okay, so they never actually went to Korea, but no, they, but no. So, uh, so we were in, we were in, had our monthly meetings all winter, and went to guard camp the next spring. At Where'd you go? Camp Ripley. Okay. Down by Little Falls. Yep. So I had a little bit of basic military training before I got to boot camp. So it ended up they. Uh, made me the, uh, the company, recruit company was divided into two platoons. And there was, there was a couple older guys that were, one was recruit company commander and the other was first platoon leader. They made me second platoon leader. And uh, before, after we finished camp, uh, or finished training, and we're just about scheduled to move on. They had a uh, a uh, kind of an election of the company for to pick company honor man for the company recruit company, and they did select me for that. And so that was quite an honor. Yeah, uh, never forgot that. <laughs> And from there I went to, they put me on a, an old C-47 and, and uh, went. So what was, what was a day in basic training like for you? Oh, there'd be some classes and, and uh, on, on uh, mostly on seaboards or sea duty stuff, ships and guns and and uh, what what was it what they had in the navy and and of course the uh, 
popular guy. And of course, the uh, 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 physical training, climbing the ropes and, and exercises and marching and everything, everything military. And, uh, You're in the Navy, you must have done some swimming, huh? Oh yeah, you had to qualify to swim too, yeah. Fire protection? Yep, and had the fire, um, some fire protection and Got a smell of uh, tear gas. Had to have to see what that smells like and and what it did to you and before you got your mask on. Get a little itchy. Oof! <laughs> Terrible <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> so, basic training was easy for you, hard or? Uh, well, I come from the farm, so I was in fair shape and and. Uh, it, it went good. Yep. I, I had no complaints. What was food like? Uh, enough food, yeah. You had food? <laughs> <laughs> had enough. Well, every, always... Everybody I've talked to in the Navy, the food was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most of the time it was. I, I, I don't remember for sure. It's a long time ago. But yeah. uh, I, had, I guess I had no complaints about it. Living quarters were decent? or? Well, just bunks. Two high bunks, you know, everybody pretty close together, and, and uh, we had a uh, our company commander. He was a Second World War uh, vet, and uh, he he was he was a real call him a real nice guy. He was really too nice for that kind of job, but <laughs> he didn't he didn't. Uh, he wasn't really that hard on us, and, and uh, there was there was uh, two or three uh, trainers wandering around the camp that didn't have a company yet, so they'd they'd come into different companies that were set up and organized, and and uh, some some of our Recruits didn't quite learn everything they were supposed to learn. The semaphore, they didn't learn it fast enough or, or keep their clothes clean enough. And so they, they came in early one morning and got us all out of bed and had an inspection in the barracks and clothes and everything. And they, they ended up pulling all our stuff out of the lockers and on the floor and then marched us over everything. And <laughs> that, was, that was a little... Uh, Excessive? Yeah, I <laughs> thought it was, yeah. <laughs> but I guess, you know, Teach you the way it was, if somebody doesn't do the job, everybody suffers for yeah. it. And <laughs> yeah, help them out. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, we got through and... Did you prayed or...? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we did. I think we did have a parade, a graduation parade. Any family show up at all, or? No, no. Okay. No. So then you got on a C-47. Yep. Then one evening they put me on the C-47, and of course while I was there, then I found out different things that were available for sailors, you know, th different jobs in the Navy. And I ran across the uh, Seabees. When you enlisted, they didn't have a MOS no, for no, you? No, no, no. You just enlisted no. and go wherever? No, you went, you got to the, got to a uh, training camp and then you took, uh, it was four different tests, I think, that... Well, aptitude tests, Aptitude yeah. tests, yeah. and... and uh, I did fairly good on those, and that they kind of kind of get get an idea where you might fit in and for jobs, I guess, from that. And and uh, uh, with with the marks I had and and uh, being company honor man, uh, I had run across information on the Seabees which is a construction branch of the Navy, mm -hmm. all construction 
all the construction trades. And of course, coming from the farm, that looked more interesting than seed to the east, so. <laughs> right. I, I, did, I got into the Seabees then out of boot camp, and, and uh, after boot camp, then they put. Where was that at? Uh, Where? California. We're at in California, remember? Yeah. Yeah, after boot camp, then they put me on uh, C-47, and, and uh, we landed someplace out north of Los Angeles, I guess, and, and they bust us up to Port Wainimi. That's where the uh, construction school was for the, for the CBs, for the okay. Navy. Close to, uh, right next to Point Magoo. Okay. So I spent, got into, uh, heavy equipment operator and, and truck driver there through that school. And, uh, so how long was that? Well, I got there in January and it was probably May before we finished. Okay, so what's some of the heavy equipment you uh, operate? Well, dozers mostly. They had one motorized scraper and it uh, seemed like that's most of what they had was scrapers and uh, and dozers. So would you be building something or just training? Uh, just... Mostly moving sand around out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay. then we got through that and, and there were six of us in the class I was in and uh, I had done well enough there that I was, again, honor man of the of that class that, that I was in, and, and uh, so then I got my choice of uh, the Atlantic Fleet or the Pacific Fleet, where I wanted to go or where I'd prefer to go, and uh, I guess I'd heard a few horror stories about the Pacific, so. Really? I, cho I chose the Atlantic, and and uh, and that's where the uh, my first duty assignment then out of there was uh, a naval air station at uh, Port Laoti in French Morocco. Yeah, but then from uh, when when I did leave uh, uh, California, Port Wainimi, the uh, Atlantic Fleet Seabees were home based in Davisville, Rhode Island. Nevada? No, Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Yeah. I was going to say, that's got a landmark. Yeah. Of yeah. <laughs> no, anyway, I, I went from, from uh, Port Wainimi, I had some time at home. I went home a bit and, and uh, then I, we... Uh, Where was home at that time? Thief River? Close to Thief River, okay. yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. And uh, af after that, then we all met in the ones that were four, four out of that out of that class from Port Wainimi went to uh, Port Laoti. So we were, four of us were together when we met in uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard in New York, and to wait for our cruise ship over to uh, Casablanca, Port Lyota, or uh, Morocco. Of course, that was a troop transport. It wasn't exactly a cruise ship. But <laughs> <laughs> Dropped us off in Casablanca. They met us from the base. They met us there in a bus and, and brought us up to the uh, naval station at Port Laoti. It's about 70 miles from Cas Casablanca, north or east on the coast. So you're here, you, they billet you or put you in a... I, I was there for, we were, we were uh, base personnel there, base maintenance and and transportation and and all that different things. That's what we what our job was, and uh, so we ended up. Well, uh, most of us, 
Well, we were all drivers and equipment operators, the four of us. And uh, so, did you get to do any equipment operating, or? Uh, not much equipment there on on the base. It, trucks mostly, truck driving, and we had the job of driving people around the base, or if somebody came over to <coughs> go somewhere to the capital or meet with the officials in the country, then we got the job to drive them around and, and uh, wherever they wanted to go. Was it uh, jeeps or trucks or? Uh, that was uh, the cars. Cars? That was cars. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So how long were you here at, at this base? Well, I was, I was supposed to be there a year and a half, 18 months. And uh, it ended up uh, about 21 months before I finally got out of there and, and uh, got back home again. And, and uh, so, what were the what were the barracks like there? Was it a open barracks or? Yeah, you know, have... it was a nice barracks there. It was it was still uh, double bunks. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And an four, open bay four, area. Four in kind of a compartment. Oh, you had you had separate rooms. Well, it wasn't rooms. It was separated, kind of separated. Uh, compartments were separated with walls. Okay. And then there'd be uh, four bunks on one side, and open over to the other side. Then there'd be four more there, and and then it would be like that all, all the way down through the barracks. So I forgot to ask you earlier, but what did your parents think you were doing this, going into service like this? Oh, they were probably, they probably weren't too happy with it to start with, but there wasn't any jobs when I, after high school I had worked uh, on a farm by Warren here all summer long through the beet season. and. Uh, after that, then there was no jobs anymore. Yeah, so it's time yeah, to move on. Huh? Uncle Sam was waiting for me too. So <laughs> rather than wait wait for the army, I, I joined the navy and and uh, yeah, because the draft was still on it. The draft right? was still on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So where's your next duty station after? Well, after after Port Laoti, then I, mo most of the time over there, I, I I drove truck quite a bit. I made a lot of runs to Casablanca. And, what would you carry? Uh, Casablanca. Most of the time, we'd, we'd go down there to pick up uh, supplies off the ships, mail, and sometimes uh, frozen food and and some supplies that came in by ship. And uh, there was an Air Force base, big Air Force base, not too far from there. That was a military air transport base that uh, some left over from World War II, I'm sure. But uh, it was a monstrous place, and, and uh, a lot of displayed the area. There was two other. Uh, Strategic air command bases in Morocco too at that time, so they supplied or brought in supplies and supplied for them too, and they they would fly in some a lot of some stuff for the navy, uh, a lot of uh, jet aircraft engines that were in big steel containers. And uh, we would we would pick them up, or or take if they sent some back to the states, they'd load them up, and we'd take them to the base and let sure. them fly them out. Hmm. So, four years you were in the navy. Did you run into anybody you knew from around here? Uh. I was in boot camp with a uh, guy from uh, just south of Grand Forks. I, 
a camp, uh, camp root, his name was. But nobody you really knew? No. The, no, whole, the whole four no, years you were no, in there? No, not from, not from the immediate uh, in area. No. no. Okay. So, after your time here, where are you going? Well, after, after uh, Morocco, then I went back to Davisville, Rhode Island. They put me in a mobile construction battalion. In Ohio? Then, pardon? In Ohio? No. Yeah, uh, Davisville, Rhode Island. Rhode Island, okay. Yeah, that was the home base of the Atlantic Fleet. I can't hear very good. Yeah, <laughs> Atlantic Fleet Seabees. And uh, so then we were there and in, in, uh, joined the MCB-6, Mobile Construction Battalion 6. And uh, they, uh, at that, on, on that time they went out, we went down to Cuba, went down to uh, Guantanamo Bay for six months. How'd you get there? Ship. Ship? Yeah. <laughs> Another... It was either, I can't remember if it was a LSD landing ship dock. Did that take a couple of days? Well, it was a little longer than that, oh, really? I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah from Rhode Island, all, yeah. Yeah. And uh, there, there I did do some heavy equipment operating and uh, dozer work mostly. And I also, was in a crew that was, uh, they put in a, uh, built a road uh, to go off of the base. And they were still working on that when, when we got there. And uh, uh, I, did, I worked with a guy that was, it was, uh, part of the road went through a pretty good hill. And everything, everything down there is, on the island is coral, pretty hard stuff, and, and uh, they went through a hill, and they they had to they had to drill into the surface there and, and blast it loose with dynamite, and I, I, I did work with the dynamite guy for a while uh, till they till they finished. It's a little tricky in the humidity, isn't it? Dynamite. Uh, didn't sweat. I don't know. I I didn't know anything about it. I just followed directions. Yeah. To, <laughs> did what he to, what the guy told me. I figured he knew what he was doing. And and uh, then uh, then another job I had down there was I delivered uh, fuel to to the equipment that was up uh, construction equipment that was operating around their trucks and stuff. <coughs> And uh, we had to go down to the, the the CB compound was separate from the big base down there, but we had to go. I had to go down there to to load up fuel and pick up everything down there. And uh, so you had a fuel truck or yeah, barrel? Yeah, yeah, right there, truck. like a fuel delivery truck. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So you spent how much time in Guantanamo? Uh, about six months. Six months? Yeah. So was there anything to do there? Uh, well, that was right at the time that Castro was trying to get into power. So we never went, never went off the base. But we were right next to the, to the ocean. And I, I spent all my time snorkeling and Spearfishing down there. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, were you guys guard duty or anything like that? Do you have to pull any of that? No, I don't recall doing any guard duty. It was just. How just, many guys were there on that base? Oh, uh, I think, well, on the base, I don't know how many. Well, the, the, uh, there, there was, in our unit, MCB 6. I think there was about 120. So it was in, a pretty good size the, base then, huh? Oh, the big, the big base is a big place, yeah. Okay. There's a big, there's a naval air station there, and and the the main part, main part of the base has a big bay. They bring in aircraft carriers and everything down there. 
Really? Yeah, well, that's a big place. Used to. Yeah. <laughs> so you were there six months snorkeling yep. and spearfishing. Yep, that's about <laughs> what I did. And working. Off of duty time and work, yeah. And what was the uh, living conditions like there? Pretty good? Or? Uh, <clears throat> it, was, it wasn't bad. It was still a barracks with bunks and, and uh, not, not as nice as it was in Davisville, but uh, it, was, it was comfortable. What was the weather like? Oh, the weather is beautiful down there. Not hot and humid? or? Well, it didn't seem humid to me. You always have that Almost, ocean breeze, Gulf breeze. right next to the breeze, ocean, so it, uh, it was pretty, uh, a pretty stable climate. It wasn't real hot. And no hurricanes while you were there? No, 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 it wasn't, no. Yeah. Okay, so from there? Well, after then, of course, from there, then I went back home again uh, for a a uh, visit, and uh, so you went home. I went home from. So did you fly home, or? Yeah, I did fly home from there. Yeah, or fly fly back to the states. Okay. And uh, after visiting home, then it was back to Davisville, Rhode Island, again for part of the summer, or for the rest of the summer. And of course, then by that time, I only had uh, about three or four months of duty left on my four years. And the the, the unit went to uh, Argentia, Newfoundland, another naval air station. Newfoundland? Mm hmm. In Canada, yeah. Okay, yeah. And, uh, uh, I mostly did heavy equipment operator there too. I ran an old. Uh, uh, it was base maintenance again up there, uh, taking care of uh, some lawns and stuff like that. And, and uh, I did run run a uh, big. They had a big old World War Two. Shovel up there that I, I used to screen uh, or handle dirt to to screen the rocks out of it. Shovel a big crane like yeah. type to clamshell mm -hmm. or no it was a shovel type shovel, okay. yeah to move dirt move dirt yeah mm -hmm. so what it was like in Newfound Newfoundland well Newf Newfoundland that's uh, that's a different climate again it was. Uh, uh, didn't do too much traveling up there. Did a lot of, uh, quite a bit of trout fishing up on. We were out, the base was right next to the ocean up there too, or the water anyway. And uh, we did, uh, we'd, three or four of us would uh, get together and go up in the hills there and trout fish up in the small stream. You had it tough, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. It was a it was a good experience. Yeah, yeah. So you're three months there. Yep, about three, then... three months there, and and when my time was up, then I flew down to uh, uh, Navy Yard in Philadelphia, where where I was discharged. Mustered out. Mustered out. Mm -hmm. So you get mustered out, and you go back home? No, I uh, signed up for uh, college then. So uh, I, f I forgot to mention that dur during this time I got married too. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> where, where at, about a couple years in, or? Uh, when I, when I came home from Port Wainimi, we got, we got engaged. And uh, 
then when I came home from Morocco. The hometown, hometown girl? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'd been in high school together. Okay. And uh, when I came back from Morocco, then she had done all the work for the for the wedding. <laughs> all set up. All set up. I just had to come home in time. Good woman. <laughs> <clears throat> so did she was she able to travel with you at all or no no so she just stayed no, no they uh, they didn't have well they didn't have uh, for new new uh, people in the Navy they they were they didn't take them along very much what's your rank when you, when you got out I was, uh, when I got out, I was E5. Okay. Yeah. So I had, at that time anyway, I had two more to go. And two more uh, and, uh, advancements to go that had been as far as I could go enlisted. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. As an NCO. Yeah. Yeah. No I, did, I did take the test for E6 in Newfoundland. I, I had enough time in and, and uh, qualified to take it. I wasn't going to. And my supervisor said, you might as well take the day off and, and go take the test. And never found out if I made it or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More than likely, yeah, it sounds like you did pretty yeah, good after I, I don't I don't know if I did or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you get home and what do you do? Well, well uh, you went like, to school, right? Like I said, I had before I left Newfoundland, I had signed up for the University of Minnesota. And uh, not knowing anything about college, I just signed up for the general college. And then when, when I did get home, I uh, visited with uh, with an ag, in, ag instructor that at uh, high school that, that I knew, and told him what I was doing and what what was planned. And and uh, when he found out what I had done, he said, "No, you don't want to go there." So he he called down to the university. He knew the big shots down there, and apparently he'd been through the University of Minnesota. So he knew the the professors and the people in the, in the uh, office on the St. Paul campus there, and and uh, he talked to them, and and he got everything set up. So when I got home, I was enrolled in agriculture education at, at the university, and so I went one year. Did the year 58, 59, and uh, when the second year came around, my enthusiasm for college kind of disappeared, and uh, I, I, I quit and w went to work as a heavy equipment operator. Around Thief Ever then? Or? No, I was down in St. Paul. Or oh, around St. Paul. Minneapolis. Yeah. So you were on a GI Bill when you? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Paid for your books yeah. maybe? And yeah. So we, end, we ended up staying down there for all together for nine years. And uh, uh, then uh, nine at that time then. Did you live right in St. Paul then? or? No, we were in Minneapolis. Minneapolis? Yeah. Okay. Well, we rented a place in Minneapolis to start with, not far from the Minneapolis campus of the university. And uh, in 1960, we bought a house out in uh, New Brighton, and that's where we were for the remaining seven years. Kids? We had... Uh, one one was born. We we have three. We had three. Uh, one of them was born while I was in the navy. The other two were. One was born in Minneapolis, and the, 
third one was born after we moved back up here in 67, 1967. Good. Yep. Anything else about your military life you want to add, Ray? It was a good experience. I, I don't regret one minute of it. In fact, for the first two, two and a half years, I had intended to stay. And then something came up and... Got married? Well, that, that too. <laughs> the, that, that didn't stop me from staying in, but uh, uh, anyway, I, I decided that I'd come home then. And You're ready, so, ready to be done. So in 67, uh, we moved from the cities back, back to around Thief River, and, and I took over the farm where I came from, and that's where we spent the rest of, rest of our life. You retired now, or? I'm retired now. Yeah. yeah. Good for you. Yep. Yeah. Anything else you want to add, Ray? Oh, no, I guess that's about it, as far as I can remember. Okay. Ray, I want to thank you for doing this interview, and thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. Thank you.